Good afternoon, and welcome to Saints Peter and Paul Parish, and we want to welcome any visitors this weekend, and please know that we are glad that you're here to pray with us, and know that you're always welcome. Now this weekend, we do celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. So now together, let us stand and lift our prayers into one voice as we sing our gathering hymn, number 303, Gather Us In, number 303. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind God's mercy and love. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite Lord of mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to save sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, you cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, so that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, Lud, Mosach, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries. To Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. But later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet. And what is lame may not be disjointed but healed. Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you're from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and from the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem. We have to enter into the journey with him when we realize that's where the culmination of his life and ministry and mission is. There he will offer his life for us on the cross. But as he goes along, you know, there are so many different lessons that to be learned. And here's one. Lord, will only a few people be saved? Strive to enter through the narrow gate. It's almost like, is he trying to keep people out or welcome people in? We've been listening to the lessons, like that first lesson from the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah. Wasn't it that he said, from the remnant, I will send people to the far corners of the world? Why? so people could come to know the Lord. That's why. And entering into that relationship with him, then they can find salvation and life and peace. Wonderful gift. So the Lord's not trying to keep us out. (laughs) He's trying to get us in. Hmm? And didn't we just sing together this gospel acclamation about who is the door, who is the gate, who is the way? He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is a unique relationship we need to have with that one. He is the way. He is the revelation of the truth of who God is, the reason we're here and where we're going, everything. And the life, real life. See, the world wants to say, ah, don't worry about it. Just it's, it's, a, it's like a super highway, just you did, no problem. No, 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 the Lord didn't say that. We understand that relationships take commitment, they take sacrifice, they take humility, they take patience, all these kinds of things in our human relationships. And Christ is trying to help us understand that relationship with him is crucial, it's center. How do we grow in it? You know, along the way, we've heard people yell at Jesus and ask questions, you know. Tell my brother to give me the share of the inheritance. Well, it led Jesus to be able to what? Teach something. Avoid greed in all its forms. Right? Okay, what could be a hindrance then to a relationship with him if we are holding on to all this stuff? You see, you can't serve God in money. Isn't that what the scripture tells us? We understand that that could be a block. It could be something that got got in the way. It's sort of like a guy who goes out and sows the seed. Remember, it falls on the hard ground. Well, it could be a hard heart. We could be closing God off. We don't want him to come in. Maybe we think we're self-unworthy of him. Well, we are. But it's his patience, his love, his compassion, his mercy that's going to bring us in. Well, we respond to what he has to say. And remember, too, it could fall among the rocks, huh? the thin soil. 
And these things could, you know, that it, that it would just, the heat of the day and all the troubles and trials of life could just kind of choke it all off. Or among the weeds. And that's the care and the concern of things in life. St. Luke is great at trying to help us understand this relationship too. Our relationship with things, possessions, power, all that kind of stuff. He goes on to tell that story about that rich fool. <laughs> yeah, the guy said, look at the crop I have this year is fantastic. Yeah, what am I going to do? I don't even have enough room to put it all in. A lot of people don't. That's why you see all those storage sheds around, huh? But the idea is that, okay, I'll tear the old ones down, I'll build new ones, and I'll just fill it up, and then I'll be happy, and I'll be taken care of. Eat, drink, and be merry, huh? He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Will these things give you life? Huh? Will they secure your eternal future? You see, so some things could stand in the way. Our own attitude about ourselves, our own thinking that we're not worthy and we're too sinful and God's not going to welcome us. Wait a minute, why did he send his son? He sent his son for the very purpose of bringing healing and extending welcome. And why is he sending his disciples out to announce the good news everywhere? For the very purpose of bringing us in. But as he makes that call, there is a response we have to have. Hmm? And it can be a challenge. Things can get in the way. We can get in our own way. <laughs> but there can be things on the outside of us that get in the way hmm? that we attach ourselves to. So you think about, how do we tell the kids? How do we teach our youth the essential nature of that relationship with Jesus Christ? That that is the key. They've got so many things that are pulling them in every different direction. Not that they're really intending to walk away from him, but do they know him? We know what it's like to have a friend. It's really important. You know, when you're in school, you have a buddy, you know, somebody you kind of hang out with, or maybe several. How important that is to kind of help us through some of the tough times. We know we could kind of always fall back on them because they're there. Well, you just want, the Lord doesn't want to just be a buddy to us. But maybe there's some image, some way of kind of breaking through. We can hear what happens. The, 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 the door's closed, all right. Okay, then we, we ate and drank in your company. Uh, so, it was kind of at that distance, you know. There wasn't like engaging with this word that he speaks or this teaching that he gives to really to embrace it and to live it. No, 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 we, we were there. We, we heard you. How many times do we sit in the pew and we just, it just goes flying right over our head. Hmm? We don't catch it. We don't realize he's talking to our hearts. He wants us to respond. Hmm? So the idea is that this relationship is key. It is the way because Jesus is the way. He is the door that opens for us. But there is a portion on our side that we have to open to him. And he's not going to force it. You can read in the book of Revelation in chapter 3, it tells us the story of how there I stand knocking at the door. And anyone who hears me knocking and opens, I will come in and have supper with them. The intimacy. Just think what we heard in one of the Gospels recently, too. You know, gird your loins, light your lamps, be like servants awaiting their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. When's that going to be? We don't know. It's oftentimes, in the very ordinariness of life, the Lord is knocking at our hearts trying to get us to be more open, huh? trying to be more accepting, more loving in that relationship and committed to him. Well, those are some thoughts and reflections this evening, just trying to help us to kind of deal with the idea, are there many to be saved? The Lord kind of changes the question. It's not a matter of the numbers. No, no, no. What about your hearts? What about your lives? And he held enough you know, kind of contention with the scribes and the Pharisees, which would come up over, over and over again. Are they really listening to him? Are they really open to what he has to say and what he's doing? Are we? May the Lord grace and bless us with that openness and that commitment.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring all our petitions before our Heavenly Father. That the church should always be a place of refuge and compassion for the sinner, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments of nations will respect religious freedom and allow their people to hear Christ's invitation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have lost a desire for things of heaven to regain the fervor of faith and the joy of the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish family embraces Christ as the way, the truth, and the life, and draws others to our Lord by prayer, hospitality, and generous serving and giving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who return to school will experience a year filled with learning and discovery, new ways to serve God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know the healing touch of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will be welcomed into the eternal happiness of heaven, especially Bernice Dickerson. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all our petitions for their offered to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the preparation and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. O Lord, you gain for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all. Bestow on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. O oh Lord, you are holy indeed, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Blessed apostles, Peter, Paul, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, <coughs> we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus tells us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. God now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit me not that I should ever be separated from Thee. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, complete within us the healing work of your mercy, and perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have a student in grades 1 through 8 who hasn't signed up yet for PSR, please do so as soon as possible and see the bulletin for information about how to register your student. Classes are going to begin on Sunday, September 11th. And finally, next weekend, it will be our Missionary Appeal Weekend. We will welcome Father Richard from Tanzania to preach about his missionary work at all of the weekend masses and offer us an opportunity to support his ministry. So please be as generous as you're able. Also, uh, starting tomorrow after mass, I will be on vacation for the next two weeks. And so uh, uh, Father John will be covering as well as Father Richard uh, because the, the uh, missionary will be here for an entire week. So um, I'm going to go home, and vi or not home, uh, to St. Simon's Island in Georgia to visit my mom. So uh, please pray for me, and I will keep you in my prayers. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.